Tech companies have figured out how to squeeze the most positive, favorable coverage out of YouTubers and journalists. And to be honest, I think it's time you knew about it. So I've been working with Marquez, MKPHD, to lay out the five key ways that these tech companies manipulate the media. Now, one thing that seems to be increasing at an alarming rate is giveaways with the launch of reviews. Now, don't get me wrong, giveaways can be a great thing, but companies have quickly realized that by partnering up with influencers like us to make giveaways as part of our review videos, they can massively reduce the negativity surrounding their product. You probably remember these nothing ear ones, right? Well, as part of their hype generation strategy, they did exactly this. They even asked me, and it's tempting, because like, how often does a company say to you they're going to make you 100 custom versions of their product for you to give to your audience? But then I really thought about it, and I realized I've got no idea how these earphones sound. I've not tested them yet, but if I'm gonna be giving away 100 pairs of them in my video, I'm gonna look like a right idiot if I then say I don't like them. Can you imagine? Don't buy these earphones, they suck. By the way, I'm launching a massive giveaway of them. Please like, share, subscribe to enter. Like, if I'm organizing a giveaway on my own terms, that's fine. But if a company is saying to me, let us send you 50 or 100 units to give away as part of your review video, immediately what they're trying to do with that is turn my organic content into a promotional video without needing to pay or write up contracts or even make it officially sponsored. Over to Marquez for number two. Okay, so the next version of this that I've seen is what I'll call the, uh, the coming soon feature. The feature that gets announced on stage and makes a lot of headlines and it's, it gets people very excited and it's super impressive. But it's it's not ready yet. It's, it's coming soon, later. But this thing was announced on stage and now you're holding it in your hand and it, it's not here yet. So you kind of just have to include maybe a sentence or two about it, about what it's supposed to do. So an example of this would be uh, when the iPhone 11 came out and that deep fusion feature was also announced on stage as one of the new camera features. So every written review and every video review had something in there that was basically at this point a quote from Apple about what Apple said deep fusion would do, but then it didn't come out for a while. And then of course, as you can imagine, weeks later when it did show up, it wasn't all that great. It didn't make a huge difference. But now all of those reviews, you know, the written reviews, you can go back and add a couple sentences, but the video reviews, you can't really go back and change. And those impressions of those quotes from Apple are stuck in people's heads rather than what the feature actually was. But it gets worse because number three is the absolute fiasco that is embargoes. Now, an embargo is not in itself a bad thing. It's just basically when a company says, don't publish your videos before this particular time on this particular date. That's why you see like 20 videos all at once when a product launches. Every reviewer has been given the same embargo time. But a lot of the time companies abuse this system with something called a dual embargo. They tell reviewers, okay, when we announce the product, the only videos you can make are first impressions videos. If you want to do any kind of in-depth coverage or any kind of comparison then you have to wait for the full embargo, which is a week or two weeks later. They come up with some sort of excuse like, oh, we need to issue an important software update in that one week period. And they'll use this to give you a whole list of things that in your first video, you just can't say or show. This happens a lot. And it's pretty clear why companies do it. Two embargoes basically forces the media to split what could have been one article or one video into two, to give the company two separate waves of coverage. One set when the product launches, but then also one set a couple of weeks later, which often just so happens to be when that product is coming up for pre-order. But also B, to make the launch coverage, the videos that most people will actually watch, artificially positive. See, the restrictions given to reviewers for their first videos, they're often so tight that you can't really say what you actually think. There was a recent launch where I was told the first impressions video must focus on the hands-on experience of the device. No benchmarks, no camera judgment, no camera samples. You're welcome to talk about the design and specifications. Design and specifications. If that's what someone wants, that's what ads are for. People don't watch my videos to find out design specifications. They want opinions, they want judgment, and companies know this. They know that if they restrict reviewers from giving opinions, then all they really can talk about are all the new features they've added, which naturally gives the viewers the impression that this is a complete no-brainer product that has no negatives. 
So yeah, you might remember this happening pretty recently and very clearly intentionally with the Microsoft Surface Duo. I mean, this was one where obviously a lot of people were interested in it. It's this dual screen Android phone collaboration between Google and Microsoft. And yeah, us reviewers all got two embargoes. So when embargo number one hits, you're allowed to show anything you want, as much as you want, as long as it's just the hardware. You can't show the software, it's it's not done yet or whatever, it's not finished, it's not ready, so you're not allowed to turn it on in your first video. But you can show as much hardware as you want. They literally said that, and some people actually repeated it, including me, in our videos. We weren't allowed to turn it on on camera. And so this was maybe the most obvious, biggest red flag of all time because yeah, of course, the Surface Duo had some really nice hardware. It had this super sleek, thin, beautiful design, one of the best hinges I've ever seen. Um, and that stuff was all very broadly painted beautifully in this first impression. And that's everyone's biggest impression. But the second you turn it on, you encounter a not great software experience. And Microsoft knew that, and that's what eventually showed up. Or, to give you another example, the Nothing Ear Ones again. Do you know how these guys had initially planned to do their launch? Two embargoes. And if you wanted to release a video for the first embargo, when everyone's gonna be paying attention, you weren't allowed to talk about fit or sound. Let me get this very clear. You want me to make a video about a pair of earphones without talking about how they feel or sound in the ears. What do you expect me to do for 10 minutes? Start knitting? Hey guys, this is my review of the Nothing Ear One. They're really... Oh. Uh, I quite like how they're... Hmm. What can I actually say? I would have felt guilty posting a video with such little information on this channel. But uh, thankfully after we pushed back, the company eventually did agree to change it to just one embargo where you could say everything. So, fair play to them for listening. Most companies don't. But do you know the biggest thing that annoys me about these embargoes is that companies only enforce them when it suits them. So last year for the launch of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, I was asked to travel to London in the middle of a pandemic to film a video in the company's shared space. Okay, fine. And then I spent a full week scripting that video to try and make the best possible, most detailed piece of content I could. And the second the phone launched, I posted it. I was so relieved the video was doing well. Only then the company emailed me to say, take it down. Excuse me? Take the video down because it violates our first impressions embargo. Because you compared this phone to a different model, we think this video counts as too in depth. Okay, so what Samsung's basically saying is that they deem any kind of comparison as too much information to give for your first impressions video. Fine, but I'd made almost exactly the same comparison for their previous launch. And presumably because that was a more positive video for that launch, they didn't just not say anything, but they actually actively reached out to me to ask if they could promote that video. But also in all these phone launch presentations, they are already making comparisons. Samsung had already told people that this new phone was like 20% faster than the last one and that the new camera had better autofocus and that the S Pen was more responsive, etc. These are all inherently comparisons. And so what they really meant was not no comparisons allowed in your first videos, but in fact, only the comparisons that we want to be allowed in your first videos. And Samsung are not the only company who do this. Yeah, that sounds about right, actually. The point is, dual embargoes are gross and they prevent journalists from doing their job. All right, so another one, and this one's kind of interesting, actually, exclusives and interviews and things like that. It's sort of along the same lines as companies trying to turn organic impressions and evaluation into promotion for free. So you might've noticed on my channel, we've done a fair amount of interviews and really fun, sometimes even world exclusives that are amazing videos. They make for a great experience, both for the viewer and for myself. But at some point, uh, the light bulb went off and people at these companies started to realize they could use these interviews as a sort of mask or just to use them to offset any negative PR. They could use them in orchestration alongside a product launch to minimize negativity. And so now these have become like a really interesting, delicate dance to walk because companies will approach you with uh, an interview they wanna do. I remember an example would be what OnePlus did with the Nord. When they were first going to announce this super hyped, ultra budget phone, the OnePlus Nord, OnePlus came to me and said, all right, Marquez, we have a world exclusive. 
We'll let you interview Carl Pei, co-founder, and you guys can talk all about this stuff. And what they wanted was a, you know, let's talk about the history of OnePlus, and let's talk about why we're launching a new product line, and this promo, and that promo, and this talking point. And so behind the scenes, I had to do a lot of twisting and a lot of messing with that plan in order to make a different video where it was still a fun exclusive interview, but we got to talk about the actual process of making a budget phone in general. We got real prices for different parts of a phone and how much they cost to manufacture, but that was a far twist from what they were planning on making, which would have been an ad. So this is the type of thing that's evolved a lot lately, and we ended up still making something that was pretty great for the viewer and great to show people, but it's definitely changing. Okay, this one's really unfortunate. I wanna bring your attention to out of context quoting. That's not right. And if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be right. When I make a review of a product, I spend a long time crafting that script. I try to make a, a really tight, structured storyline that is meant to be watched from start to finish. And I like to think that this makes them useful videos to engage with. But it also means that if you just take one sentence out in isolation, it is not at all going to summarize the subtlety of what I'm trying to say. I'll give you an example. Late last year, I made a full review about that Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And I titled this video, The Perfect, Samsung. And what I meant by that, which I explained in the content itself, was that this was a brilliant phone, but it was let down by some of the fundamental problems that Samsung phones in general have. So I was kind of surprised to see that a week later, this title was sitting on Samsung's homepage, the perfect Samsung. Those are my words, but when taken out of context, they mean something different. I spent a long time digging, and as far as I can see, they didn't tell me they were gonna use that quote. But even at the very least, if they did, I would have expected them to at least link the full video from there, so people could understand what I meant by it. Nope. And there's plenty of other examples of this. One of the major ones being these mashup videos. The 30 second or so quick fire cuts from various reviewers. It's very clear why they make these videos. They're short, they're sharp, and they leverage the trust that people have in these reviewers. But they chop out all the caveats. They'll cut videos mid-sentence to exclude any negatives, any buts they might mention, to make it seem like they've just created the perfect phone. If you chop out the caveats, you could make the Red Hydrogen One, a phone that was universally regarded as a miserable fail, seem like an incredible device. Look, this is a mashup that I made myself for this phone that was reviewed as like a three out of 10 in a best case scenario. The Hydrogen One smartphone. It's definitely one of the most unique looking phones of this year. Oh. It's just so different. It's built like an absolute tank. But beyond that, holographic display. Creates an experience beyond 3D. Things will sort of pop out of the screen and appear to fly at you. Kind of float above the display, unlike any other phone selling today. Amazing speakers, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, so the biggest in any phone I've tested so far. Interchangeable lens mount, smartphone form factor, a holographic media machine, cameras. You really can create something almost magical. A photo that seems to jump off the screen. I'm ready for this. It is unique. Every time I pick it up, I'm impressed all over again. So yes, you did hear that right. I said Snapdragon 835. That's why the performance and battery life are actually good. The world never saw this coming. Red cares a lot. Now, don't get me wrong, companies do sometimes ask for permission before using our content like this. They sometimes purchase licenses, but they often don't. And they never tell you that they're going to use it in a way that alters your message. So there you have it. Pre-launch giveaways, features coming soon, dual embargoes, exclusives, interviews, and out of context quoting. Now you know. Thanks to Marquez for hopping in on this one. You can find his channel down below. To find out if you can actually trust me, click here. Or to see some of the cheapest, wildest tech on the planet, click here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.